Hey, welcome to Sugar Melts. I've got some really fun projects to do today with you. So I've been busy making um, different envelopes that fit your A2 cards. Um, of course, you know, me and boxes, I'm like a cat, gotta have a box. Um, this is a different kind of box though. It's got the lid embedded and you can customize super easy the shape, the size, the depth of it. I've got bigger boxes, smaller boxes, and I'll show you a template for making these boxes and the envelope. <clears throat> because last week I was finishing up a project for a friend of mine who moved away and I miss her dearly, so I just wanted to send her a little something. So here I've got the envelope that I made. Uh, this is all from the uh, I think it's called In Good Taste, maybe the name of the paper series. Uh, you may recognize it. It's got this, um, the pinks and the grays, all different hues. So I made the card, the envelope, and the box all to coordinate. So inside here is this card. And you'll see here the butterfly and the envelope are made of the same pattern. And it opens up to a fun pop-out card. And I've got some butterflies flying inside. And this is pale enough that I feel like I can put my message on that. Um, but certainly if you chose a darker uh, uh, paper, you could you know, make, put some notes on the back here. This is stamped vellum that I've cut out and um, tear and taped underneath the side panel. So we'll be doing that here in a few minutes. And then this is the box that I made of another coordinating paper. Uh, when you're choosing your box paper <laughs> for this box, because it's a big box, it's going to use up a good two sheets. It will. So there's the lid. Recognize this paper? How pretty is that? And here's the bottom of the box. And this is the journal that I made her. Um, I won't go through how to make the journal today. This will be for another project another video just because they do take a little longer. Um, but I've got a whole plan this year to make a bunch of journals for folks because I had cut down all this paper, didn't know what to do with it. It sat in the corner for maybe two years and it finally hit me, let me make some journals out of that. So I'll just show you this though, even though we're not gonna make one today, but this will be a future project. So I used all different kinds of um, paper and I made a match on the inside and with the pockets that we made, I sewed in the signatures. So there are five signatures that have uh, five sheets of paper making 10 pieces of paper per signature. With pockets, I used a, um, just a circle punch to cut the um, little thumb hole there so you can get your papers or receipts or whatever she plans to do with it um, out of there. There we go. So there's the journal. You can see how they're sewn in in the back. I put a little jewel on the outside and this ribbon to secure it. So we will make the journal in an upcoming video. There we go. And it fits perfectly in this box because again, with this, with this pattern, you can customize the shape of the boxes very easily, very easily. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside and let's get to looking at the card and the envelope and then we'll make a box. So this envelope pattern here, we'll make this at the end. Let's go ahead and assemble the card, then we'll make an envelope and then we'll make a new box for, because we can. So, okay, set this aside. Well, maybe I should keep the card close by just for my template here. So I went ahead and did some of the cutting just because I've got three things going on here and I thought it might make it a little easier. So with the paper that I'm using, I just love this brick pattern and I bought this paper right when it first came out and it sat in a drawer now for close to a year because I just haven't known what to do with it. I wasn't, I don't know if some paper is just too pretty or if it's just hard to come up with the ideas or it's hard to cut it. But what this will look like this will be on the front. I don't think it needs any matting because we're gonna have 
our sentiment that we'll stamp on this. This is another piece of the DSP, as you can see that paint flex. So I tried to cut it to get in as much of the texture as possible. For the foliage that I have here, um, what I've really been trying to do is use my DSP, my pattern papers in different ways. And so what I did actually on the, what we'll do this time is I used the DSP with the dies. And I think it um, really gives such a pretty picture of what all you can do with them. Um, you no longer see the original image. So if it has a big pattern on there, you can cut that down. Um, Cause some patterns are so large that you may feel limited to only use it like in a scrapbook. But this allows you to really optimize those colors. So let's see if I've got, so on this big sheet of paper here, so this will be the one probably that we'll use for the uh, envelope. So this is what it looks like. It looks like paint, right? Paint on a brick wall, which is so pretty. But I'm, uh, that's not how I wanna use it. So by cutting it down into these beautiful butterflies, oh my goodness, look at these butterflies. So they've got just got these little beautiful bright flecks of pink on them. And then one of the other pages has this whitewash. So I thought these are gonna be just beautiful behind that, that'll be inside. And then I've been wanting to work with vellum. Vellum can be intimidating because we've all heard that you can't stamp on vellum, it doesn't dry. Well, that's not true. I was told that, I believed it for a long time, but it's, it's not true. Uh, you just, you need to give it a few minutes to dry, but it definitely dries. So I took um, a piece of vellum cut it down to where it will um, lay inside here. And we'll probably cut it down a little more. It's a little long still. And this will go underneath it. And so that when you close the card, this is where you get that fold. Now, because any kind of glue will be visible through the vellum, uh, I like to cover it up with something. So we'll cover it up with this. The stamp set that I've been using is the one that matches the In Good Taste DSP. I think that's what it's called. Uh, this is the stamp set, the Tasteful Touches. So I am used uh, this beautiful branch here for the stamping on the vellum and the Just Saying Hello for my sentiment. For the dies, I used quite a few dies from different sets. Let's see, for the... Um, uh, the foliage here I used from the Forever Fern set. Um, these two, these are just my favorites. I love them. That's what this one looks like. It looks just light and airy and fluffy. Again, that's another pattern of the DSP. And then, oops, sticking together here. Yikes. There go. Uh, this one here, just beautiful patterns. The third foliage, this little guy here, he's just so wonderful. Uh, this is from the die set that came with that first frost. If you have that, pull it out. I use this all the time. It is definitely not limited to winter. And then the butterflies, uh, the butterfly dies that I'm using are coming from the Butterfly Brilliance that was recently released. And the butterflies that we're using, this big one here, and then these two little guys here. So lots of beautiful butterflies. They cut great. Oh my gosh. They look very detailed. You may think you need to go through your big shot multiple times, but they cut great, especially through DSP, which tends to be thinner than your cardstock. So um, noting that when you're using the DSP in the fold, just be in the envelope, be a little careful with your bone folder not to get too heavy handed like I did, by the way. Um, so, because I kind of messed up a couple of them and said, whoa, I got to back off, Geronimo. This is way too heavy here. I don't want to be that strong. So, um, okay. So, I think that's all the products, both, mostly, that I wanted to show you that I was using here. Of course, mix and match with whatever you've got, and it's going to turn out beautiful. But I was really happy because I love this paper. Didn't know how to use it and incorporate it. I looked online, couldn't seek any inspiration. And this morning I said, Lori, just get in your craft room and it'll come together. And sure enough, 
it did. So again, this is the card we're gonna be making. The only difference will be, my little butterfly wing got folded there. I gotta be careful, I may have to glue him down. Uh, is the, the big thing that we'll do different on this one, there's where you're getting folded, yeah. Um, is that we'll be using the patterned instead, and I think that'll give it even more depth and dimension going forward. Okay, so let's jump in. Put that there. <clears throat> Oh, I did want to highlight one other thing real quick. Um, I know I've mentioned this before, but with any project, it's really helpful, especially if you really like the paper, you know, with we're doing the envelope in the box today, the first time out, use your, um, like, junk mail, you know, just newspaper, whatever, just to make sure you've got that template right, because sometimes dimensions you may get online from other sites just may not be perfect or you may cut it wrong that first time and um it's just better to learn your mistakes on something that isn't um as as important to you so okay that being said so let's jump in here so i've got a couple things i need to trim down and i want to fold this in half so let's get on that so let me get these guys over here so they're safe I've got one butterfly that's missing somewhere in my craziness because I've had multiple projects going on between the, the journals and all the paper I've been trying to utilize and um, templates and I've got about four projects in here and it is kind of crazy right now. So um, somewhere in here you may see a butterfly and you think why is that butterfly just sitting alone in the corner well I'm probably been looking for it for an hour and I don't know where it is so maybe like one of those horror movies where you're like there's the guy look out no don't go to the truck yep that would be me walking to the truck so I'm just gonna trim this down so opened up it's the full um, eight and a half right now and so we know that a one sheet is going to be four and a quarter and I don't want it to go edge to edge it's going to be in the middle so I'm going to go ahead and cut this down to about three inches and I should be plenty fine that should be just fine and I don't think I will need this again for a little while okay let's do some the other thing with this so I mentioned let's see let's put the tear and tape on this we can go ahead and do that I'm gonna use the wide tear and tape. So this will be, yeah, that'll be, that'll be fine. That'll be just fine. So um, let's go ahead and put the tear and tape on the bottom side. Get my scissors. That's about good. Okay. So I like to get it right to the edge there. we go just line that up don't want to see any of this and just it's probably not important to trim that down it won't be visible and it'll get covered up by the pages so we'll just go ahead and do like this perfect Okay, so we'll put that on later. I want to score this in the middle. Okay, where's a little scoreboard? Here we go. Some days I have so many scoreboards everywhere, and yet none of them are in reach. So this is, uh, since this is DSP, you want to be careful not to score too hard on this. So this is exactly four inches, so I'm going to score right down here at two. And I'm using the fat one, as you can see, so that way I can get the indention without damaging the paper. Okay. And fold it in my bone folders. Buried, of course. Yep. Just a gentle fold. So let's go ahead and put that in first. Okay. So that... Let me double check the length on that. Yep, that's exactly four and five and a quarter. Okay, always, what do they say? Measure twice, cut once. Um, I am notorious at not doing that. I get so excited and then I regret it later. So I'm not too crazy with the glue because I don't want a lot of bumps under this. 
I know a light field of glue is going to secure this just fine. And I bought this for a specific project that I have no idea what the project was. But I have found this to be absolutely indispensable. I use that all the time with gluing projects. So let's go ahead and I'm going to put this down here right in the seam. So get your seams matched up and push it down and then fold it over, fold it over, come back. There's a bump there. So I use this and I flatten it out. And then I go back again and I fold again. And then I just go back and forth until they really, they seal so good they become like one. But until then it can be kind of bumpy and then it's gonna be hard for the card to fold. So I just do this a couple times and then eventually, perfect. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good here. Go ahead flush that out. Okay, so that's pretty darn good. And then we can, I can secure this. I guess I can go ahead and put this on the front now. That's fine. So again, I don't do a lot of the glue. I like a really light stream, just so I don't end up with something that's too stiff or bulging any place. And this one is, um, I like it right to the edge since I wasn't framing it. Um, I didn't put a mat on it at all. So this, the card here, so four and a quarter by five and a half, and I only brought it in by an eighth, an eighth. So this is four and an eighth by five and three eighths. So it's, but this way it really fills that paper. Okay. So then let's go ahead and work on this. So this part, I'll try to keep my head out of the camera, but no promises, no promises. So the vellum is actually pretty forgiving if it's not perfect, um, but it's okay, we'll get it there. So you can see where that fold is. Now since this is white paper, it's a little tricky, but not terrible. We'll just kind of line that up. See, there we go. Okay, so watch this. So what works for me is I hold that center. Okay. It's kind of hard to use all your fun tools and getting the tear and tape off when it's like this. Keep it flat, keep it lined up, and then just push it down. There we go. So you can see you hardly even notice it. Hardly even notice it. Because I'm right-handed, I don't try to force myself to be left-handed in these projects. Um, if you're ambidextrous, great, but otherwise use your dominant side and just flip the projects upside down. So there we go. Okay, now what we'll do is we'll take these and we're gonna glue this over that. So that'll kind of cover up any gaps or um, anything that wasn't quite perfect and we'll be fine. Sweet, this is coming together fast. These little pieces of paper here, um, and again, you can modify these. There's plenty of dimensions that'll work. I didn't even write anything down here. So I push it up to the edge here, and then I just line it up with the top and the bottom of the vellum and the DSP. So it's pretty well covered. There we go, okay. And then you can't see that tear and tape glue at all. So this is actually measuring, so again, five and a quarter by, um, this is two and a quarter, looks like two and a quarter. The only thing I would encourage, and it really doesn't matter if you have a little more or a little less, just to make sure the two side panels, you probably want them to be the same. So again, I flip it upside down. So I'm looking at it with my dominant hand here. There we go. Cute, 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 cute. And then I just push it down. That'll give a good seal for your, um, your vellum here while that's coming together. That's coming up. Just kind of play with that. Make sure it folds okay. 
There we go. Coming together, looks good. Looks good. So bring that forward. There we go. Look at that, how lovely. Okay, so then we can work on the front. Maybe best to keep it kind of flat since you've got some bulk. You're gonna have bulk on both sides, so I like to keep it open when I do that. So first we're gonna stamp our sentiment onto here. And I'm gonna do that in basic gray. I always use black, so I'm trying to, trying to challenge myself to get out of my comfort zone and use something different, try different colors. The way I measured this was when I was pulling out my um, dies, and I used for this one the Tasteful Labels, and I literally held the die over the stamp to make sure I would have plenty of clearance. So I know that can be frustrating if we're doing it and it kind of miss part of the letter or it falls off. Perfect, just saying hello. Now, since this is white on white, it can be, you don't want it to get lost on there. So like that can get a little lost. And so let me see where I put the card. One thing I did on this one, and you only, you don't notice it unless you're looking for it, but it, it does help to separate them. I run a marker along that white edge and it just keeps it, has a diff gives it a little more dimension. So what I do, and some people can sponge and that's fine. I didn't want to sponge on this. I didn't think that was necessary. So all I do here, let's just kind of clear up, get rid of that white, 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 stark white edge. And it gives it that shadow that just, I don't know. I notice it, so, you know. That's what's important in this stuff, right? Are you happy with your end project? Just be careful not to run your marker across the image like I almost just did. Okay. Okay, so there you go. So it just gives a little bit of separation. Not a lot. Okay, there's the cap. Get that out of the way. Got some extraneous trash. So let's get all of our pieces and parts. So in one pattern of the paper, let me show you what I did here for these dimensionals. If I have it, that's oh, sorry, not dimensionals, the DSP. If I can find the paper that I used, it wasn't the paper that I just loved. So that made it a little bit easier. Mm -hmm told you I've got a crazy mess going on here but honestly you wouldn't even recognize um, the pages that I used because they just work so well coming out as DSP on the back side it was wood but I thought that was too my well look at that it almost looks like fall so you can just keep well now here I am thinking I like this whiter side better what do you think That's pretty cool. Who saw that coming? And then I could just have this dark brown coming out. Oh, I think we're gonna just shake it up and change. That sounds really fun to me. Okay. When I'm putting the dies down, or the, um, yeah, the die cuts down, sorry, the die cuts, I often will just start by gluing the largest one down to make sure it doesn't fall off the paper. Sorry, my head just bumped the camera there. Um, Cause it's really, it is frustrating when you work so hard and then it falls off the camera. Oh, I'm so happy I flipped that over. That's really fun. See, you, you look at the paper, or at least I look at the paper and I've got this image of what it's gonna look like. But once you cut it out, it looks very different. So then I've got this leaf down here, so I'm gonna alternate the patterns, okay? And then this one and that one, is that right? I think that one has to go, I think that's from that paper and that's from that paper, okay.
do, 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 do. Okay, so we'll do like, let's just go like that. See what happens. These are so pretty. And I'm just gluing them randomly. The bulk of that center is going to get covered by the sentiment, so I'm not too worried about that. And then I've got my little baby foliage here. This is one again from that first frost kit. If you've still got it, dig it out. Let's not forget the treasures just because they're retired and we don't sell them anymore doesn't mean we don't love and appreciate them. Okay, so I've got that or that. I'm thinking this side should be a little darker. Okay. Yeah, I really like the way we can use DSP for way more than just um, a background on a card. You can use it for the die cuts to give it a different impression. You can use it to make these boxes and envelopes and just a way to kind of expand how you're using your products. And um, so that nothing is just sitting in a shelf not being loved kind of reminds me of Toy Story. Um, so anyway, not sure where that came from, but uh, okay. Just putting a couple dimensionals on here. I wanna pop this up, you know. Wouldn't be a car without dimensionals, would it? No, I'm kidding. I do love dimensionals, but I don't think I use them on every card. Okay. Ta-da! How pretty is that? Oh my gosh. And then we've got our inside. So let's secure some butterflies. I've got four butterflies. Oh, five butterflies. Five butterflies. Now this guy, I think, is too big to go on the inside. It's just, um, we've only got two inches and he's like a little bit bigger. So I'm going to slip him. Oops. He's all hung up. Okay. I'll slip him kind of right there. And I don't know that it needs a butterfly on the front, but it's going to tie in with that envelope really well. Okay. So I'm just going to put glue on the body. <clears throat> and then, since we've already seen how they like to get hooked on these leaves, get that right there. And see where I've got one little spot to pop out. Get him out of there. Love my pokey tool there. Okay. Cute, 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 cute. Okay, so let's get some butterflies going here. So this guy should fit right there. Let's put you right there to highlight the pink that came out. And then this pink one right up there. Oh, so cute. The other nice thing about using the DSP with the dies is that you don't have to stamp quite as much then, not near as much, because you're not um, stamping and then lining it up for the dies. So you can just put it on the pattern paper, wherever you kind of like, whatever image you want to pull out, and it will do that. I could put another one there, but I don't think it needs it. And so now I've, with this lighter paper, it's very easy to just use like kind of a, a dark pen, a black pen, even a, a Sharpie pen, um, and the note should be easily visible with this card. Awesome, 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 awesome. Uh, when you're making an envelope, which is what we'll do next, the other consideration for that is where is the envelope going to go? Because if it's going in a gift bag and you don't want to write on the outside, you can use any paper you want. But since sometimes the DSP can be can be dark, uh, so um, just be cognizant of if you're putting their name on there or a message or an address of whether or not it will be visible, especially if you're mailing it. Oh my goodness. So this is our template for making the envelope. It's going to be six and a third by 10, I'm sorry, six and three fourths. Where'd that come from? Six and three fourths by 10 and three fourths. We're going to score it two and a half by seven. 
and then half and half. You're gonna cut these sections out. That's why I scribbled on them. There are other dimensions out there on YouTube. Be very careful. Uh, if you go to get their measurements, what I would encourage you to do is draw it out like they've said, and then measure this inside box, because this is where you're gonna be slipping that card into. And if the card does not fit in that box, it's not going to fit in your envelope. I know that sounds silly, but trust me, I have actually made this envelope a couple times now and not all dimensions work. I'm like, what's wrong with it? And then I looked and sure enough, especially in the height, it was not the appropriate dimensions. So um, looking at this, you can see how you can modify then your own paper uh, however you need to, depending on the size of your card. So if your card is a little longer or a little wider, um, if it's thicker, you want to give it more bandwidth, you can do that just by taking this template and expanding it as you need to. Okay, so having this, I'm going to go ahead and let's cut some paper. I'm going to use this pink one. direction I want the paint so I want that to be the front of the envelope so I'm going to cut this to six and no let me think so I want to do like this and I'm going to do ten and three-fourths yeah that's not feeling Nope, I want to do it this way. This is what we do, right? We measure twice and cut once. I want to make sure I got the right 10 and 3 fourths. No. Nope. Oh my gosh. Sorry, I'm talking so much, I'm not able to pay attention to what I'm doing here. So 10 and 3 fourths. So I want to slice it like this. Yes. This. 10 and 3 fourths. Okay. Let's see if this works. There we go. So silly. I'm just. Go and go and go in here. And then six and three fourths. There we go. So now it matches. So now the paint's going in the right direction that I want on the front of my envelope. I'm gonna need my big scoreboard for this one. Okay. So first, we're going to do a half. Flip it around. Do a half. And it may not matter, but we'll just do it like this. Two and a half. So that's going to be your top flap of your envelope. And then you're gonna jump down to seven. Okay. So there's your kind of your envelope. And here's your sides. And let's cut away. We only want the middle to remain. So let's cut that and that and then that and then that and since it's a long one I will go ahead and use my big scissors a little more on that edge wasn't quite in the seam that's better okay and just get in that seam there If you have a corner rounder, I think this, uh, just 
gives the envelope a nice touch. Have the corners. Because of the shape of my corner rounder, I can't, um, it won't fit on these edges here, which is fine. For those of you who don't have a corner rounder, this is not difficult. Just take your scissors. You can take a coin. Uh, there's different ways to round the corners. Once again, be use your dominant angle, whatever that is, left or right, to just make sure you're always in the best position. Don't try to do it backwards. Okay. Scissors. So many tools out of the way. And my tear and tape. So this is a little thinner, so I'm not going to use that fat stuff, but I've got my half, half it's uh, probably half inch. On this, it's, you want to make sure, because this is what your envelope's gonna look like. So put your tear tape here. If you put it here, it's easy to have too much tape up above it, okay? So put your tear tape there. And you can either just kind of eyeball it, or you can measure it out, whatever, whatever you like. Where's the end of my tear tape? Here we go. Okay. So just kind of line it up. This is going to fold down over that. Make sure that glues down. Press it good. And I've also found, also you want to make sure you take them both off at the same time. Otherwise, it can be a little tricky to get the tear tape off once that side is sealed because there's just not a lot of wiggle room on that. So bring them both down like this. And there you go. Okay. Here's our card, and there's our envelope. Just watch your dies. <laughs> Make sure they all fit in. Everybody's going together. Nobody is left behind. There we go. How cute is that? Oh, and then we gotta make our box. So for the box, so in this case, let me use the journal as the example. This will use up two sheets of paper. You're, you're gonna only have some scraps left. So this is the box that I made. Depending on the gift or what you're wrapping, um, that will determine the size of your box. So you can make them all different sizes. So for this box here, this journal is just over seven inches. So let me get my pen here and I'm gonna make some notes. So, and I do this every time, otherwise you end up, or at least I end up, the box isn't quite perfect. So that's, we'll say that's seven and a quarter is the uh, side of the box. Then the other side, it's about five and a quarter. Okay, because again, you the, the gift has a little bit of um, extra going on there. It's thick, it's heavy, it's got this jewel on the side. So I'm looking at five, seven and a quarter and five and a quarter, and it is, it's an inch. It's easily an inch. So I want to give it one and a half inches for height to make sure this fits in there. Seven and a quarter, five and a quarter. I don't want to tear the box or anything, so I'm going to add a quarter of an inch to that. So we're going to say the box is going to be seven and a half by five and a half by one and a half. Okay, so working with that, let's look at what our dimensions will be. So for the bottom part of the box, we're gonna have the box be seven and a half by uh, one and a half on all sides, right? So uh, that will make it one and a half. So this together equals three. So I'm looking at 10 and a half five and one half times one and one half times one and one half by, that's three, eight and a half. So this is gonna be the dimension 
for our box. 10 and a half by eight and a half. And what I also encourage you to do, and I've said this before with boxes, is whatever side is gonna be the top, in case you're using different paper, just add an eighth of an inch, just an eighth, just to make sure it fits comfortably over that. Uh, some people may not do that. I just find I have less of a headache when I do it. So let's go ahead. These are our dimensions. That's how my process every time <laughs> I make a box is just to make sure I've got that. Okay, so let's get this scoreboard out of the way. And first we're gonna cut some paper. So I don't have any more of that paper because the pack came with two sheets and I used both of it to make that box. But I do have this paper. And let's see here. I'm thinking This paper seems a little busy to me for a whole box. I think I'm gonna go ahead and use this paper to make the box. What do you think? And this will be the inside. Okay, there we go. Decisions are made. There we go. So let's do our cutting here, 10 and a half. 10 and a half. Eight and a half. Okay. And this one, we're going to add an eighth. We're going to add an eighth of an inch. So we go to ten and a half, and we're just going to go up one little line, just one little line. That's all. Just a little bit. Eight and a half. Is that eight and a half? Eight and a half, and just go up one little bit. Just an eighth or a sixteenth, just a little bit to give you some wiggle room. Okay. Okay. And let's get the scoreboard back. Here we go. So the scoreboard, all we're gonna do is half one and a half inches on all sides. And because this isn't as thick as cardstock, it's a little thinner, so we don't want to be quite as heavy handed as we normally can be with cardstock. One and a half, one and a half, one and a half, and last but not least, one and a half. Okay. One and a half. One and a half, one and a half, and one and a half. Okay, let's assemble the box. So let's fold down. And you want your edges to be pretty tight there. Um, this is a box after all, so we want it to be, have a good varnish on that. one, all four sides, and then we'll do the other one. Okay. Okay, so then we're gonna just snip the four sides, four corners, I'm going to table them in. I do, as you know, I love to miter them so I don't see the edges popping up. But let's cut the four corners first. Get in that seam nice and good. Okay, and then I... Just trim off a little bit of the outside of each tab. Just so it doesn't hang over the edge once we tape it down. And the same thing. 
nothing on this one. And again, the reason I'm flipping it over is just because of my dominant hand. That's all. I just want to make sure I have good control with the scissors and with the angles that I'm cutting. I'll cut each four corners down. Not quite all the way. Give it a little more of a cut here. There we go, that's better. Okay, so then we need our tear and tape. And we're just gonna tape these in. Again, I always like to look and remind myself, where am I taping? What am I trying to accomplish here? Oops, this one doesn't, doesn't look like I, oops, I didn't cut it all the way through. That's so hard on the dark DSP sometimes to um, see those seams. So just to, I like to do kind of a dry run, make sure I've put everything where I want it. So I'm going for the outside of these four and they're gonna be taped on the inside. Okay. So you can either do individual, do a big old block like I like to do. Okay. Uh, this paper, since it isn't terribly hefty, uh, if you're doing something similar um, and your gift is whatever you're putting in here, um, you may think about cutting a, a little piece of cardboard, even this inside stuff that comes at the back of the DSP, to give it a little heftiness to it, some sturdiness to the box. Okay, so once again, I'm going to do it on the outside here. Um, and you can certainly alternate these. This would be really cute if you did one pattern on the outside of the top and a different one on the bottom. That'd be cute. And then just one more small piece for these two. And here we go. Take off all your papers there. One, two, three, and four. Oops, where'd you come from, buddy? Got it. Six. Seven. Eight. And our last one is nine. Oh my goodness, static electricity. These things are everywhere. Yikes. So it's pretty easy then when you've got different sizes to know which one's the top, doesn't fit, you flip it over. That looks like it might be the top. Yep. So there we have Our box with our card and our new envelope all in the coordinating papers so just like we had before super pretty okay hope you guys like today's projects and uh, give me some comments some feedbacks and look forward to talking to you soon thanks guys bye